Good evening. Welcome to California Today. I'm Liang Zhang. Here's a preview of some of today's stories. A strong 6.4 magnitude earthquake struck off the coast of Northern California on Tuesday. Two people died and thousands of homes and businesses were left without power. Hollywood producer Harvey Weinstein is convicted of a rape in his Los Angeles sexual assault trial. They could face up to 24 years of imprisonment. New development in the San Francisco city official corruption case related to Mohammed Nuru. A Chinese billionaire real estate tycoon was arrested for bribing the former city public utilities director. Homes and businesses were without power in Northern California. This was after a 6.4 magnitude earthquake hit off the coast around 2.30 a.m. Tuesday morning. NTD's David Lam has the latest. A 6.4 magnitude earthquake hit the city of Ferndale in Humboldt County in the early hours of Tuesday morning. Dozens of aftershocks followed until 4 a.m. State Route 211 to Fernbridge was damaged while safety inspections were conducted. Obviously a, a relatively strong um, earthquake and, and uh, it was felt widely as far uh, east as, as Redding and, and as far as uh, south as in the Bay Area. Social media videos showed damage inside one property with home items broken and strewn across the ground. In the first hours, uh, over 60 calls for assistance, 10 of which were medical uh, related, um, one of which was uh, uh, unfortunately a cardiac arrest uh, and fatality uh, in, in the morning. Local authorities said two people have died and about 11 injured. Over 70,000 people lost power across Humboldt County, but the sheriff said a tsunami is not expected. The state's Office of Emergency Services issued a statement. Cal OES is leading the state's response and is working with local officials, tribal governments, and state agencies to provide needed resources to local communities. The earthquake was about 10 miles deep and struck about 7.4 miles from Ferndale. The city is near the coast and about a four-hour drive north of San Francisco. If you feel like there is uh, a, the earthquake happening again, an aftershock, drop, cover and hold, find a safe spot in your home to get to, uh, please remove all that non-structural stuff or bolt it to the wall or secure it in some form or fashion so that it's not above you. It's been almost exactly one year since a 6.2 magnitude earthquake hit elsewhere in the same county. David Lamb, NTD News, California. It has now been many hours after the 6.4 earthquake jolted Humboldt County. Local residents took some time to reflect, react, and respond to the aftermath of the quake. In the town of Rio Dell, residents described the horror of the moment when the quake struck. I was asleep in my bed and my husband actually woke me up and the house was moving and we fell out of bed and then we went under the bed and we were holding underneath the bed until the movement had stopped and then we just ran out of the house um, and then as we were running out of the house uh, my husband you could just smell gas everywhere the whole gas leak the whole thing got knocked off our water got knocked off so there's water everywhere um, I just remember walking out of the house and seeing like our house basically on the ground and our, our porch higher than the house. Jackie, like many others, are also taking time to assess the damages to their homes. Now that it's kind of set in, I'm just kind of like, you know, we're alive. We've got almost all our animals. I don't think this house is going to be able to be brought back. There was an earthquake in, I think it was 92, that this happened to the house last time. Um, and I just, I don't know if it's going to come back from this one. The region also is known for relatively frequent seismic activity, but this latest quake appeared to cause more disruption than others in recent years. Well, I was lying in bed asleep like most people and it just kept shaking and shaking and things were crashing. The TV was coming down, the microwave, everything, like all my little knickknacks were crashing everywhere. And it was too scary to go under a, a door jam or anything because it just kept shaking, so it was safest to stay in bed because you can hear stuff crashing everywhere. Liz says she lost many of her personal belongings to the earthquake. Well, yeah, I had a lot of damage from the water 
line is broken. I don't know where, but I got lost a lot of like precious little knickknacks and things like that, you know. According to Cal Fire, Tuesday's Tembler set off one structure fire, which was quickly extinguished and caused the two other buildings to collapse. PG&E says crews are out assessing the utility's gas and electric system for any damage and hazards. A company spokesperson says it could take several days to get a complete picture of the damages. Former film producer Harvey Weinstein was convicted yesterday for sexually assaulting a woman in the Los Angeles area in 2013. He is facing up to 24 years in prison. 70-year-old Harvey Weinstein was convicted on Monday in a Los Angeles Superior Court for three of the seven counts he was facing. The charges include forcible rape, forcible oral copulation, and sexual penetration by a foreign object. All three of those counts are related to a victim referred to only as Jane Doe No. 1, with the crimes occurring in February 2013. Jurors acquitted him of charges relating to a second alleged victim and were unable to reach verdicts on charges relating to two other women. Today, justice was won in the case of People v. Harvey Weinstein. In this criminal case, I represented Jane Doe 2. Number 2 is Lauren Young, who gives permission to use her name. And Natasha M., who was an 1101B witness, which is sometimes called a Me Too witness. Los Angeles Superior Court Judge Lisa Lynch declared a mistrial on the counts that the jury could not reach a verdict. Prosecutors argued during the trial that the Oscar-winning Weinstein used his position as one of Hollywood's most successful movie producers to gain access to and sexually assault women. But defense attorney Alan Jackson told the jury that the entirety of the prosecution's case could be summed up with five words quote, take my word for it. Jackson said the alleged victims lied on the stand about what was actually consensual or transactional sex. I think this means that Harvey Weinstein has a life sentence in prison. Uh, he has to serve out his time in New York. He has a remainder of a 23-year sentence out there. And now he's looking at about an 18 to 24-year sentence here in California. The ex-producer did not testify in his own defense. A Chinese billionaire developer was arrested in London for his role in a corruption scandal with a former San Francisco official. He is accused of bribing the official for a real estate development project in the city. Billionaire developer Zhang Li was arrested in London and accused of paying kickbacks to obtain permits for a construction project in San Francisco between 2015 and 2020. Li is allegedly the developer one that the FBI described in former Public Works Director Mohammed Nuru's bribery scandal. Li allegedly bribed Nuru with free dinners, gifts, international trips, and hotel stays. In exchange, Nuru would help Li speed up the process to build a multi-million dollar mixed-use project known as the Fulton 555 Project near City Hall. The 235,000-square-foot mid-rise luxury condominium boasts a grocery market on the ground floor and a rooftop terrace. According to Zillow, each unit was sold for an average of a million dollars. Since then, Nuru was sentenced to seven years in prison in August. Li is the co-founder of R&F Properties based in Guangzhou, China. Its U.S. affiliate, ZNL Properties, which Li owns outright, is the developer of Fulton 555. In a translated statement by Mission Local, RNF Properties said, Li Zhang was accused of bribery for hosting a banquet in China and providing hotel accommodation for the former San Francisco Public Works Director. We are taking legal action against this false accusation. According to Forbes, Li's net worth is $2.2 billion. Reuters reported that Li is out on bail of about $18.4 million. University of California postdoctoral scholars and researchers are back at work after ratifying a labor contract over the weekend. But thousands of graduate students continue to strike. University of California postdoctoral scholars and researchers resumed work this week. This is after 48,000 researchers and student employees across all 10 UC campuses launched a multi-week strike. They demand, in part, 
pay raises due to cost of living increases. On November 29th, UC officials struck a tentative deal with postdoctoral scholars and researchers who refused to return to work until their contract was ratified out of solidarity with the graduate students. According to United Auto Workers, the union representing the strikers, the agreement for postdoctoral scholars includes up to a 23% salary increase by October 2023. It also includes a host of other benefits, like up to $2,500 in annual child care reimbursement with annual increases. The tentative agreement for academic researchers includes a pay raise of 4.5% for the first year, 3.5% in the second, third and fourth years, and 4% in the fifth year. It also includes eight weeks of 100% paid family leave and increased bereavement leave. These contracts will be in effect through September 30th, 2027. UC officials also announced that they would be negotiating a contract for graduate student workers through third-party mediator Sacramento Mayor Daryl Steinberg. The mediation schedule is still being agreed upon, according to UC officials. We're going to take a short break, but here's a look at what we got for you when we come back. A federal judge is looking to block a provision in an upcoming state gun law. He says the law could discourage people from bringing lawsuits to court. Gas prices are dropping in the Golden State. Industry experts say the decline in cost and demand are leading factors. And if you're looking to travel this holiday season, be prepared for crowded airports and roads. This Christmas is expected to be one of the busiest for Southern California. That and more on California Today. Welcome back to California Today. I'm your host, Liang Zhang. A California federal judge says he will block a provision in an upcoming California gun law. He says that the statute would have a chilling effect and discourage people from challenging it in court. San Diego federal judge Roger Benitez says he will block a, quote, tyrannical provision in a new California gun law scheduled to take effect on January 1st, 2023. According to the Associated Press, Benitez said in a courtroom last week that he would soon issue an injunction to halt parts of the new law. Currently, the law would require people who fight the state's gun laws to pay the government's legal fees should they lose in court. This law was heavily promoted by California Governor Gavin Newsom. Benitez says that the so-called loser pays requirement would produce a, quote, chilling effect that would hinder state residents from suing due to fear of having to potentially pay huge lawyer fees. The Epic Times, sister media of NTD, reached out to both sides for comments, but did not hear back. The lawsuit was filed in September in the U.S. District Court of Southern California. It is one of many lawsuits now pending in courts across the country after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in June that individuals have a constitutional right to carry firearms in public for self-defense. California drivers are enjoying a little holiday cheer at the gas pump. The average price of regular gasoline has been dropping statewide. A AAA spokesperson says the declined cost of the oil and low seasonal demand are leading to reduced prices. According to AAA, the average price of regular gasoline dropped to $4.36 per gallon statewide on Tuesday. It is 16 cents less than last week and 94 cents less than last month. Andrew Gross, AAA spokesperson, said that the cost of oil dropped from $120 to $70 per barrel from last spring. He said combined with low seasonal demand, gas prices could slide a bit more before leveling off. Walmart, Costco, and Sam's Club reportedly have the lowest gas prices. But even with the decline in prices, California's $4.36 per gallon still sits well above the national average of $3.14 per gallon. Governor Gavin Newsom has accused oil companies of, quote, gouging California drivers with gas prices. He and other state legislators proposed enforcing penalties based on oil company profits. 
Last week, a group of restaurateurs and franchisers said that enough voter signatures were collected to add a measure to the 2024 ballot. The coalition is hoping to overturn a law that would set up a fast food council to regulate wages and benefits for fast food workers in the state. On December 5th, the Save Local Restaurants Coalition, the National Restaurant Association, and the International Franchise Association said they had submitted more than 1 million signatures. This exceeds the roughly 623,000 needed to put a measure on the 2024 ballot. The coalition is pushing back against the Fast Food Accountability and Standards Recovery Act, or FAST Act, saying the law will cut jobs and raise consumer costs amid inflation. In a December 5th statement, the coalition wrote the FAST Act would have an enormous impact on Californians, and clearly voters want a say in whether it should stand. Hundreds of union supporters of the FAST Act protested against the Save Local restaurants last month. Unions say the law will offer fast food workers better wages and protection from discrimination and harassment. The signatures are being sent to the California Secretary of State's office for verification. Governor Gavin Newsom signed the FAST Act into law in September, and it's set to take effect January 1, 2023. But if the referendum qualifies for a 2024 ballot measure, the law will be put on hold until then. Christmas is this weekend, and people are gearing up to travel and spend time with family and friends. According to AAA forecast, Southern California may see the busiest holiday-related travel in history. Southern Californians are ready to get out and travel during the year-end holiday season. According to the Automobile Club of Southern California, travel has been a high priority throughout 2022's major holidays. The Auto Club is also forecasting this year to be the second busiest for the state and the third busiest ever nationwide. The Auto Club projects 9.2 million people will travel at least 50 miles or more away from home from Friday, December 23rd to Monday, January 2nd. That's a 4% increase from last year and down only 1% from 2019 before the pandemic began. Of those Southern Californians traveling, 8.1 million will take road trips, 771,000 will fly, and 262,000 will take a train, a bus, or a cruise for the holidays. This year's Christmas and New Year's Day fall on a Sunday. That means extended holiday breaks for many Americans. The Auto Club also notes that Californians who are traveling can work remotely, making it more flexible when it comes to travel arrangements. But where are people traveling to? A survey conducted by the club looked at top destinations for Southern Californians. Rounding out the top five are Las Vegas, San Diego, Mexico, Grand Canyon, Sedona, and Santa Barbara and Monterrey in the Central Coast. An estimated 7.2 million people will travel by air, up 14 percent from 2021. Officials anticipate busy days ahead for LAX. The airport expects around 200,000 passengers per day between December 16th through January 3rd. And for those traveling by road, AAA expects to come to the rescue of about 256,000 motorists. Officials advise people to prepare ahead of time to avoid any delays either by air or road. Now to NTD's Thomas Christian for an update on sports. I'm Thomas Christian, giving you the California Today Sports Roundup. A.J. Dillon ran for two scores, Aaron Rodgers threw a touchdown pass to Aaron Jones, and the Packers kept their playoff hopes alive with a 24-12 victory over the Los Angeles Rams on Monday night amid freezing conditions. The temperature was 15 degrees with a wind chill of 7 just before opening kickoff. The Rams are now 4-10 and have matched the highest loss total for any defending Super Bowl champion and look to be a completely different team than last year. 
Los Angeles played this game without several notable injured players, including three-time Defensive Player of the Year Aaron Donald and All-Pro receiver Cooper Cup. Quarterback Baker Mayfield made his first Rams start with injury sidelining Matthew Stafford and John Wolford. Mayfield went 12 of 21 for 111 passing yards with a touchdown and an interception. His life wasn't made much easier with so many starters out, and he was sacked five times while working behind an offensive line, missing center Brian Allen. Rodgers went 22 of 30 for 229 yards with a touchdown and an interception to win his ninth straight start on Monday Night Football. Packers 24, Rams 12. LaMelo Ball scored 16 of his 23 points in the fourth quarter, and the Charlotte Hornets held off the Sacramento Kings 125 to 119 on Monday night to stop an eight-game losing streak. De'Aaron Fox had 37 points for Sacramento. DeMontis Sabonis scored a season-high 28 to go with 23 rebounds and seven assists for his third 20-point, 20 20-rebound performance of the season. Keegan Murray and Harrison Barnes added 11 points apiece. Sacramento cut its deficit to two with one minute and 24 seconds left on Fox's layup. Charlotte responded with a Gordon Hayward jumper and free throws from Kelly Oubre Jr. to seal the game. The Kings now drop the sixth place in the Western Conference with a record of 16 and 13. Hornets 125, Kings 119. The Suns did just about everything well in their blowout win against the Lakers. They shot 50% from the field, made 23 pointers, and had a 51 to 36 rebounding advantage and just eight turnovers. Phoenix led by as much as 26 points early in the third quarter, but the Lakers cut that advantage to 91-77 late in the third. The Suns responded with back-to-back three-pointers from Ish Wainwright and Landry Shamit and took a 99-77 lead into the fourth. This matchup was almost more notable for those who weren't playing instead of the action on the court. The Lakers were missing their all-star trio of LeBron James, Anthony Davis, and Russell Westbrook. Instead, Dennis Schroeder led the starless Lakers with a season-high 30 points. He shot 12 of 19 from the field. Kendrick Nunn scored 17 points off the bench. Lonnie Walker IV and Thomas Bryant both added 16 points. Chris Paul scored a season-high 28 points, and DeAndre Ayton added 21 points and 11 rebounds for Phoenix. Suns 130, Lakers 104. And that's all for your California Today Sports Roundup. That's all we've got for you tonight. We'd like you to join us again on California Today every weekday at 8.30 p.m. Make sure to check out our broadcasts on our California Today webpage. You can find it at ntd.com slash California dash today. You can also find all of our top latest clips there, ready to share with friends and family. Send us a message on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram, or through our email, california.today at ntd.com. I'm Lang Zhang. Have a wonderful evening.